breaking through every barrier, every chain, every bondage as we identify our high praise to God and its influence in our life. When Jesus taught us to pray, he said, when you pray, you declare our Father which art in heaven that he fathered us intimately, personally, that we're a direct offspring of God. Hallowed be thy name, high, lifted, separate, worthy of all praise and glory is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as, it's in, as it is in heaven. Now when we're praying, we can pray about our circumstances and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We can give thanks, we can pray in relationship to everything, or we can identify that which is the will of God in heaven and come with an awesome attitude of gratitude that we are his ambassador. Matthew chapter 6 is one of the uh, gospels that unveil how Jesus taught us to pray. And we know that Paul, when he was teaching on prayer, he said, let your request be made known with thanksgiving in Philippians chapter 4. So you and I are on a journey that is for the natural environment to be notified that we are the ambassador of God our attitude, our emotion, our perception in life be notified that we live with thankfulness and an attitude of gratitude and high praise unto the Most High God and in an interaction of manifestation of God, we are the ambassador. We are the representative of the kingdom of God and the will of God being done on earth as it's done in heaven. So today as we take a journey into this time of literally praise is our breakthrough, God has ordained an experience in your life. So the world knows that you are the ambassador of Christ. You're representing the King of glory. Your attitude has been shifted from being affected by the circumstances to be vertical in its adoration, thanksgiving, and honor. And you are the recipient of the kingdom and the will of God done on earth. Father, I thank you for supernatural revelation. God, we ask you today, as we are about to step into a dominion of authority and breakthrough, that God, you have separated us from this world. You have crucified us to the world and the world to us. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory, for there's none like unto you. No one is compared to your glory and grace. God, you have ordained today a day of majesty, a day of honor, a day of praise. Father, it is our time of breakthrough. It's our time of penetration. It's our time of liberation. So God, turn the circumstances that we perceive. Open our eyes of our understanding. Let us know the hope to which we are called and what the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. And God so manifests the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. You set Jesus at your own right hand in heavenly places. You set us together with him far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Father, today, everything is under your body's feet. We are the called. We are the assembly of the called. We are part of the family in heaven and earth. And we are the body, the fullness of you that fills all in all. So Spirit of the living God, move through us, speak through us, work through us the mighty works of God today in the matchless name that's above every name, Jesus. Amen and amen. 
I want to go back to a scripture that I believe is, is a critical one. Psalm 107, verse 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron sunder. Now, here is the works of God being acknowledged in the praise. Now, I want you to go back in your life today and identify where he's delivered you from. I know I can share with you many, some of you know many of my testimonies in my, my youth being mentally insane and locked up in a mental hospital for almost two years and living in an isolation ward and all of a sudden, God visits me through a minister, a Baptist pastor, that brought salvation to me. And you see, when we consider the works of God, we must consider that he does what he does through us, his body. You may or may not be familiar with what happened to me, but my parents signed a waiver of the state that if they killed me or permanently maimed me, I would never, they would never have legal recourse against the government. They signed me away as a human guinea pig for a test system where they would cut the front cranial area, take out the, the skull itself, and then insert a probe and kill the front lobal region so there was no memory, no consciousness of being alive. And so as a result, the prognosis would be you would live as a vegetable, have no control over any of your bowel functions or anything else, but you would still exist on the earth. No one could talk to you, but you would still breathe. Well, the fact was, in the state hospital that I was in in 1969 through 71, every person that had had that procedure died from a brain infection. And when you think about the reality of God having power in a Baptist pastor who two days before they were going to do the the breakthrough of this part of my brain and, re and kill it because lobotomies were illegal at that time. The only legal lobotomy was an electronic one. And here a man came that brought salvation to a young man that had no capacity of saving himself. I, I went to the same, I ate out of the same pan I went to the bathroom in. There was no hygiene. There was no recognition of human existence because they knew as a fact that everyone that had the procedure died. But when I was brought out to a solarium in an isolated area where they locked the door behind the two of us, he having a suit on and me in my property of state hospital pants and shirt, he said to me, that the power of sin is going to kill you. I thought he was cussing at me. I thought he was telling me that I was going to die. And then he said, but if you'd receive Jesus, and I thought for sure he was cussing at me because I'd only heard the name of Jesus used in cuss words in my later teens. But yet, nonetheless, the word of God knew how deliverance worked. He knew that when the word of God went forth, it never returned to him void. I'm speaking encouragement to somebody today that you're facing an impossible situation. And you may think that, oh, I need this great power of God. I need this great anointing to give breakthroughs. Listen, the word itself is sufficient because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John unveils that reality, and he brings forth the clarity that we beheld him, the glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of glory and grace. And he, Jesus, that Word of God, came into this young man, my life, and the next thing I know, I had no idea what happened to me. I didn't know who he was, but I was on the carpet crying. And I got up and my mind was sound. I was clear in my thinking. You see, God is a miracle worker. 
You may know the story of how they led me back into the isolation area and I beat on the, the little grid that was in my, my window that the that orderlies would walk by and, and see that those in isolation would, you know, still be living. And <clears throat> my God did a miracle. He did a he not just did a miracle of salvation to get to me to bring me to salvation, but he, God, did a miracle in deliverance. I want you to hear that no one is out of the reach of God. Nothing is impossible to the God in whom we trust. Nowhere is beyond the scope of God's voice. It just takes somebody to go with the word in their mouth confidence that salvation is by proclamation. And as I got up off that ground, I, I said to the preacher, I said, what did you do to me? He said, you got saved. I said, what is that? He said, you got born again. I said, what is that? He goes, oh, my time's up. I have to leave. I have another appointment. And I, I said, you can't leave. You don't know what you just did to me. Well, the next day, you probably heard the story how they let me back out of my isolation area because I screamed all night that I was saying, remember, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. And so as this manifestation of our God takes place, the head psychiatrist hears my story, and he doesn't believe a word that I'm saying, and I, I only did what I knew to do. I was a very violent young man, and I reached over, I jumped over the table, beat him in his face, and next thing you know, he's bleeding all over the place, hits the panic button, they come in and shoot me up with drugs, knock me down, and throw me in a straitjacket, and drag me off to my isolation area. The only difference was, remember, we've got a God who is doing wonders. He's breaking the gates of brass and cutting the bars of iron into nothing. And so as they released me from my shackles and I was let into the corridor to go into the isolation region, there were guards on both sides looking at me. Hear me, hear me. The God that we praise is a God of deliverance. I don't share my testimony very often, but I just was stirred today that somebody needs to hear that your loved one, your loved one, your life is not out of reach of God. That today is a day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. And as I was released into that corridor, I heard this audible voice speaking unto me, run. And I remember thinking in my mind, if I run back and forth, it's about 20 feet, I, where am I going to go? And if I go side to side and I run side to side, where am I going to go? It's about a four foot, five foot wide hallway. And then all of a sudden this voice heralds again, run! And I look down to my left, and all of a sudden, the crash bar that had been chained, double chained with double dead bolts, was now totally unlocked. The dead bolts were undone, and the chains were open. And as God is my witness, and my life has been a testimony ever since, in 1970, as I came through that time, God did a miracle, 1971, in, I guess it was November. It was snowing outside, late November. And all of a sudden, I'm running. I have property of the state hospital pants, property of the high state hospital shirt on, socks, and it's snowing outside. And I remembered when the police car brought me in about a year or so ago, I remember there were more trusted mental patients in a specific region and I, I ran over to that area and I began to scream, I'm on a run, I'm on a run. And as I did, one man threw a huge blue pea coat over on me. Another one gave me like size 14, 16 shoes without shoelaces, of course. 
and I'm running out into the field and I, I recognize there's a barbed wire guard gate that I had to get by. So as I put my collar up and tuck my hair in, put my, my beard up tight and said, hey, bump, he opened up the gate. Listen, God opens prison doors. He knows who he is far more than we know who he is. When we praise him, we bring forth the acknowledging of the supernatural, gate-breaking, bar-cutting, supernatural God that breaks through. So I'm out now and I'm running and I run right into the highway and a car ran through me. And this lady, Peg, she ended up in our church many years later, hearing my testimony for the first time, screamed, you're that young man with red hair and blue piercing eyes. And I, I, I said, what do you mean? She said, I was the one driving that car and I thought for sure I killed you. My friend, I want you to know that the God that you praise is the God who is able the God that you honor is the God who fulfills his word and performs the doing of it. So as time I escaped, miracle after miracle happened, came back to Delaware, ended up with a clean bill of mental health. God, listen to it again. Oh, that men would praise their name, praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men would praise his name for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. You say, but Pastor Gary, you go back to that testimony. Oh, I can go back to being poisoned. I can go back to being in an elevator crash, being T-boned at 70 miles an hour on a highway. I can go back to all types of diseases trying to attack me, situations trying to kill me. I can go back over and over and over and over again. And I can tell you testimonies of countless thousands of people whom God has set free, who miracles have taken place. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness for his wonderful works to the children of men. Would you give him praise today because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever? Would you give praise today for the wonderful works of God that have manifested, that he's broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder? Would you give praise today for the breakthroughs that God gave you, for the miracles God did for you, for the supernatural goodness he is to you? Oh, Father, I give you thanks. I give you honor for the privilege of coming to my body, my parts that are critical to me, that I love so dearly, the body of the living Christ that I minister to daily. Father, I thank you that you're a miracle-working God. I praise you for your faithfulness and your wondrous works to the children of God that I speak to today. Father, reveal yourself with might and strength and power and authority and let your strong arm of salvation reign. Let your wisdom and power prevail. God, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I bless you. Bless the Lord with me. Exalt his name together. Let his name be exalted on high. Well, as we thrust into thanksgiving and praise on this Thursday, I want you to also couple your praise with your sacrificial giving. You have no idea how critical your giving is to advance the kingdom of God and fulfill his destiny on this earth. Lives depend on the other side of your seed, countless lives countless lives are on the other side of your giving. And your giving 
makes all the difference in the world. So sow your seed into Jesus' experience. Help us as we are building up for 2023. It is our year of absolute deliverance and grace, and your giving makes all the difference in the world. And remember, Jesus, light of the world, is coming up here in just a few weeks here at Victory, so you want to enjoy it and be part of it. Well, let's get on our phone call. I know my testimony stirred up some things. You need to give praise, so I want everybody to give praise. In America, give us a call, 302-561-6767. In America, 302-561-6767. In Canada, 709-500-6767. Canada, 709-500-6767. God bless you. See you tomorrow, Lord willing.